Okay, time for a little tutorial. Uh, I'm going to show you how I did uh, dynamic text in Blender. So I recently got to 10,000 subs. Thank you, everybody. And uh, so I decided to do it like a count up video. And so it went like this. So as you can see, the text just counts up until it hits uh, 10,000, and then it stops counting. And as you can see here, there's it's you know 3D text. It's extruded and beveled, and there's some dynamic lighting effects and stuff like that. So uh, let me walk you through. Uh, how to create dynamic text that changes programmatically, not based on just you manually editing the keyframes. So there's a wide variety of uses you could use for this. You could, for example, um, have a character walk up to a door, put their hand on it, and the, uh, the uh, text would change from stop to enter or something, or every time a character goes through something, uh, their name changes on, on a, uh, a, a plate or something. So once you learn how to use this simple trick, you can use it in a variety of circumstances. So let's go ahead and just uh, set up the scene here. Okay. And uh, by the way, I've got the screencast keys working finally. Uh, I found out it's a, now a separate add-on, and I'll put the link in the show notes so you can download it. And uh, okay, so we just centered our little cursor there, and let's just go ahead and add a text object. And then we can tab into edit mode and change the text object to 9,900, and then tab back. And then uh, we'll go ahead to the text um, data block here, and just go ahead and extrude it out, and get a little bevel. And I imported some kind of metallic materials from a, uh, a library of materials that I found on like Blender Nation or something, and just have this kind of gold material. So as you can see here, it's a uh, it's got like a nice little metallic sheen to it and stuff. So now we have a text object that we can manipulate. Let me go to the uh, uh, the base scene here, which is on uh, layer one, and I can walk you through this. So I've got the text object and the camera here. Uh, what I did too was I created a, a cylinder object, and I just went ahead and, and gave it a low number of, of uh, faces, I think like 12 faces, and then just tabbed into edit mode and deleted every other face and gave it an emission material then I went to the object tab and under cycle settings, I turned it off as visible to the camera in the shadows so that uh, I just wanted the the light circling around. And I just kind of circled, um, uh, animated, rotating slowly. Okay, so we have our, our scene set up. So, uh, and we have our text object. If we go to the text data block, you can see that it is called text. Makes sense, right? So let's go switch here to from the default view to the scripting view. And I'll walk you through the simple script that changes this. As you can see, when we go through the frames and we go back and forth through the frames, the text updates, okay? Until we get to frame 100 and it stops at 10,000, okay? So uh, this uh, little tiny script here, you'll have to go and create a new text block if you haven't already. And uh, I'll walk you through this line by line. So I'm gonna assume that you don't know very much or anything about Python, okay? So if you're a Python guru, I apologize for some of the basic info, but uh, so basically um, Python works on a system of, instead of brackets and semicolons and stuff to differentiate the lines and where the code is nested, it just uses um, formatting. So if you copy this script from somewhere else and paste it in here, if it's not formatted correctly, like if the tabs, you can see here this if statement has been tabbed over, and then this statement inside the if, if statement has been tabbed over twice. So if this formatting is missing, it probably won't work. You'll get an error message. So you just have to be aware of that. Uh, so let's walk through this line by line. Okay, so import BPY, this just imports the library of all the code that we can use to access everything inside of Blender. So you pretty much need that. Then we just create a uh, variable called scene and we point that to our current scene. Then we create a variable called object and we point that to our text object. And again, you give it the name of whatever is in this object block that you want to reference, okay? So if this was called numbers, you'd have this thing in here called numbers, all right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, the next line, def recalculate text. Uh, this basically creates a function. All right, so functions inside of uh, Python here are called def. And we're calling it recalculate underscore text, and we're feeding it the scene object so we know where to get um, the uh, data from. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a little simple if statement. So if the scene uh, current frame is less than 100, then we update the text object text. 
All right, so we just give the uh, object data body uh, this string to work with. So as you can see here, we're, we're adding the current frame number to 900 in order to come up with the, you know, the count up, or you can count up and back. So, and uh, once we've hit, gone past frame 100, we just say, then go ahead and just set it to 10,000 because there's no need to count anymore. Okay, then uh, the final line here uh, just goes ahead and just says, every time that Blender detects that the frame has changed, go ahead and add this, uh, this uh, function to that frame so that uh, every time we change the frame, uh, this is gonna be called on this text object. All right, so once we've done all that and everything is ready, you save your, your, uh, save your, uh, your file, uh, then you go ahead and hit run script and you won't see anything happen because it's, it's waiting, you know, it's, it's based on whenever the frame changes. But as we can see here, when we go through the frames, uh, it is indeed functioning. Because if you don't hit run script and you just hit alt A, uh, nothing, it, the text won't update, all right? So you gotta remember to actually run the script. All right, and if you get error messages, remember um, there's like a little drop down here. You you might see like a little error message pop up right here for just a second. If you drag this down, you'll see everything that's been happening. So this is actually nice too because you can see everything that we do uh, becomes um, like a little line of Python text that you can look at and see what the commands are, all right? So you can see we just did run script. All right, so that's really basically all there is to it. Um, you know, then you just go ahead and just uh, render it like normal. So like I said, you can use this for a wide variety of different circumstances. Instead of just manually changing the text over and over again, you know, that would get crazy, especially if you had to do something like this. But if you're doing something like a three-dimensional text that has to change for various reasons, I can think of millions of reasons why you'd want to do that. Uh, this is the easy way to do it. So I hope that this tutorial helps out and good luck blundering.